From cute pigs to ugly bugs and not the creepy crawly kind, Everdream Valley has been a roller coaster of ups and downs that has ultimately led to disappointment and distaste, two words that should be nowhere near a game as fun as this. Keep watching to find out how this darling little farming game stole my indie heart and then shattered it. At first glance, Everdream Valley is a simple farming experience filled with adorable animals and a friendly, easygoing atmosphere. And for the most part, that's what you'll get. The game is here to offer a calming experience away from the long list of action-oriented shooters and high-anxiety horror games that are being released almost weekly at this point. Unfortunately, the execution of this easygoing experience missed the mark due to problems, bugs, and glitches, some of which are standard issues with games nowadays and others that just shouldn't exist. Just as an FYI, I played the game on PS4 and PS5. PC has its own issues, but not nearly as game-breaking as console platforms, so I'll try my best to clarify if the issue exists across the board or if it's a secluded issue to the PS4 or PS5. If you want to know which platform is recommended to play on, hands down without a doubt PC is the recommended option. The bugs can be fixed much more quickly, which means you'll run into far fewer issues overall. The main premise of Everdream Valley is that you play a young, angsty teenager who has been dropped off at your grandparents' farm to live while your mom handles some business elsewhere. While at the farm, you'll learn how to do daily chores such as feeding animals, tending the crops, and general farm cleanup. The more you learn, the more jobs you'll be given from your grandparents and the local vendor, the only NPCs you'll run into in the game. Keeping the NPCs to a minimum ensures your quest log remains neat and tidy, preventing you from becoming overwhelmed or simply getting lost. Add on a map that is honestly the perfect size and includes color-changing markers for everything you need to complete the story, and you have a game where you can easily do as little or as much as you want each day that passes. Eventually, the game will lead you into the heart of the forest, where… I don't know. I wish I could tell you what happens after that, but I do not know. The game is currently broken on PS4 and PS5 and cannot be progressed past that point. Yep, you heard that right. The story cannot be finished, which is a damn shame. Up until hitting that point, Everdream Valley was well on its way to becoming one of my favorite games this year. While farming games are naturally relaxing and an easy way to pass the time, Everdream Valley felt like a small adventure game that just so happens to take place on a farm. Sure, you need to collect animals, grow crops, and all the basic farming duties that come with these types of games, but the main questline is so intriguingly different and quite honestly, unexpected. The inclusion of the dream missions to push a discreetly magical story forward allows players to step out of their farmer role and into one of exploration. This makes the situation of not being able to finish the story that much more depressing because up until the actual bug itself, the game was really, really good. Calling every dream valley user-friendly would be an understatement at best. They added features that I didn't even know I wanted or needed, and now I feel like I'm going to be expecting them from every game like this from now on. One of my absolute favorite things is how they handle the inventory system, something hoarder gamers like myself struggle with on an every game basis. Because it's a farming game, you can expect to be picking up a lot of stuff. And, in turn, you can expect your backpack to fill up rather quickly. Luckily, if you pick up too much and drop off too little, you don't have to worry about losing anything. Any item that is picked up that doesn't fit in your bag will automatically be transferred to the storage chest at your farm. This is especially beneficial if you are away from your home for a few days questing or just exploring around. Since you won't have to return home to simply empty your bags, you can just go out and play and have some fun. If you don't want to pay attention to your crops, you don't really have to. While there will be some some quests that basically teach you how to farm, that aspect of the game is honestly just something you can do on the side. If you don't tend to your crops, they don't die, they just won't grow. If at any point you feel like selling them, just water them again and they're good to go. You can even pop on some fertilizer and speed up the growing process quite dramatically. The same thing goes with the animals, though if you decide to neglect your animals and they get sick, while they won't die, we will have every right to judge you, so go feed the cows. The day cycle in Everdream Valley is quite forgiving. If you have access to the proper areas, you can complete any and all quests you have on any given day before the sun goes down and the wolf comes out, something you will grow to hate very quickly. While I understand the sense of danger at night should be present, 
Having an animal that can outrun the players, chase them, and then send them back to the farm when they get caught is not quite ideal for this game. You are given a tent that can be used to sleep in at night without having to go back home, but if you get caught by the wolf, you'll need to go back out to where you just were and get it. Thankfully though, a passive mode for this event has been added on Steam, so fingers crossed that the same update comes to console soon. While you start the game on a farm that is fenced in, don't let those barriers fool you. If you can sow the ground, you can grow crops on it. This gives you at least five full islands to use for your farming, which is an insane amount of room. Be careful when doing this when playing on PS4 though, as the entire map is rendered together and you'll already be dropping some frames from just opening up each area. If you build up too much throughout the map, you can expect some heavy lag to follow. The same issue does sort of exist on PS5, but not nearly as bad. Of course, PC players, it will depend on your system and whether or not it can handle everything. Along with the crops, you can also place your animals anywhere and everywhere. While there's not really much reason to do this outside of just having multiple farms, it can be beneficial to at least move them closer to the vendor, so that if you ever want to sell them, you don't have to try to get them to follow you for too long. You can pick up or dismantle everything you put down, so customizing your farm is something you can easily sink some time into. Do note that you currently cannot dismantle the animal shelters on PS4 or PS5, but it is a confirmed bug that is being fixed, so just be wary of your placement of the shelters until that patch arrives. While the dream missions are a great addition to the story and not too terribly difficult, you definitely start to get a feeling of can we please just skip this after doing them every night. While you can technically skip them, it's only for that night and when you go to sleep the next night, you'll need to try and finish it again. There's no escaping them. This is the most frustrating with that pesky wolf set to ruin us all. Our nighttime friend makes a return in one of the missions and while he's supposed to be there to catch sheep, it feels more like he was sent to destroy every fence possible on your farm. The cleanup the next day can be a little tedious, especially if you already had plans or an idea of what you wanted to work on that day, and there's no way to build a sturdier fence to keep them from breaking, so it's either pray you don't get the wolf dream or hope it doesn't do too much damage. It's a bit weird and feels a little out of place compared to how smooth sailing pretty much everything else in the game is. As a game in and of itself, Everdream Valley is such a welcome delight, but I can't get over three main problems that are just ruining the overall experience in a strong way. Firstly, as mentioned before, there is a game-breaking bug that prevents you from being able to complete the story on PS4 and PS5, which is a big problem. I'm not going to claim to be an expert by any standards with this stuff, but in my honest opinion, that is a bug that should have been caught well before release, especially since it absolutely cannot be missed. The story isn't crazy long and getting to that point isn't too much of a hassle, so I just don't understand how it went unnoticed. Thankfully, the developers are aware of the issue and are working on it with the patch to be announced. The second main issue is the save system and two different bugs that can send your love for the game into a whirlwind. Everdream Valley includes both an autosave system and a manual save system for players to use. The autosave, while it tells you a time and an image of the most recent save it made, sets you back hours of gameplay when used. Even if the time says it was saved a minute ago, reloading the autosave file will most likely put you back near the start of the game and, depending on how much you've done since then, can be immediate buzzkill of an otherwise fantastic game. The normal solution would be to say just utilize the many manual save slots available to you, but the further you get into the game, the more likely you are to run into big bug number two, which essentially deletes your save files in the game. All except for the autosave, that is. It doesn't matter if you use one save slot or six they will all load with an error that the save file can't be found, completely erasing any progress you made in the game, which is very much not okay. This gives an immediate feeling of your time being wasted and puts some hesitation in play. If it happened once, will it happen again if I decide to rebuild everything, or will I be okay? Granted, everything does go by faster the second time around, but that doesn't deter from the fact that the save file problems should not exist. My last issue with the game is more of a personal one as a content creator and a trophy hunter. This doesn't really have to do with the game itself, so feel free to skip this part if you want to. Full disclosure, I received a review code for this game with the agreement that I would be doing a trophy guide and videos in exchange, which is standard and fair and very much still happening. Nothing new there for us guide writers. When I work on a game, I do my best to figure out everything on my own before emailing the contact person with questions or problems. This game was a little different, of course, because two very big bugs were found pretty early on, and it was imperative 
imperative that the contact be initiated and all that jazz. No big deal. So once the main game breaking bug was discovered, it then became a question of trophies and achievements and what effect it may or may not have on them. All were good to go except for one which requires you to catch 30 unique types of butterflies. I spent days trying to find that last butterfly while periodically asking if it was in an area that can't be accessed because of the bug and for days I heard nothing. Usually when that happens, it just means that they want you to find it on your own, which is okay, you know, I'm not mad about that. So I continue to search high and low for this by now infamous flying insect. Then, much to my dismay, it was discovered that the final collectible can't be accessed in the game, period. Meaning you can't get that trophy or achievement, and in turn, at least on PS4 and PS5, you can't get the platinum. The trophy list is intentionally broken, and you know, maybe they didn't know what effect it would essentially have. That is very much a possibility, and I know it's much easier to do these sorts of shenanigans on PC because you can add seemingly endless achievements to your game, but on console, it doesn't quite work that way. And while the argument of playing games for trophies and achievements is still ongoing and strong, it doesn't change the fact that doing this excludes an entire gaming community from wanting to play the game for reasons that I still just don't understand. If you want to add additional content down the road, by all means, players will absolutely love you for it. But just separate the base game content with the DLC or add-ons, especially when it comes to trophies and achievements. The end rating for the game is something I've been going back and forth on for a little bit now. If you take away the bugs, it is a great game. It's fun, it's adorable, and it's honestly just a good time across the board. It's something I'd easily recommend everyone, no matter their age, but I can't just let the game breaking bugs slide. I can handle a few glitched bits and bobs here and there, and while I'm not thrilled with the trophy situation, it's something I can look past because it only affects a small percentage of gamers. But not being able to finish the game is far from okay. Without that and the save problems, Everdream Valley easily gets a 7 out of 10, but because those issues exist, I can't recommend recommend it in its current state and therefore it'll end with a 5 out of 10. With that being said though, I have very high hopes that the patches needed to fix everything will hit sooner than later and everyone can enjoy the game in all the glory it was intended to have. I look forward to the game being fixed and updated because I really want to see how the story ends so I'm really crossing my fingers that it hits hopefully hopefully really soon. And that'll just about wrap up my review for Everdream Valley. My name is V, thank you all for watching and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more in gaming content.